Hello friends, in some of our previous lectures we have started this topic called as derivatives. Now we have learned the basic concepts of derivatives, we have seen the formulas of all the functions, we have seen standard functions, we have seen composite functions, isn't it? And we have taken some numericals, some examples on derivatives of composite functions. Now students, you know this lecture we are going to move a little bit ahead we are going to learn a new concept called as derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions now in this session we are just going to understand what the formulas are for the inverse trigonometric functions and we will take some of the questions some of the examples based on this concept now to understand inverse trigonometric functions we have a separate lecture you make sure that you watch that entire video to understand what inverse trigonometric functions are so today's lecture will be completely dedicated only on the formulas of inverse trigonometric functions and some of the numericals some of the examples on inverse trigonometric functions now i hope you already know that there are six trigonometric functions there is sin x cos x tan x, cot x, sec x and cosec x. The six trigonometric functions will have six inverse trigonometric functions. As I am telling that inverse trigonometric functions to understand we have another lecture make sure that you watch that lecture also to understand inverse trigonometric functions. So as I said we have six trigonometric functions so that's why we have six inverse trigonometric functions. For instance, when I say y is equal to sin x, y equal to sin x is a trigonometric function. Then I can say x can be written as sin inverse of y. So this sin inverse is called as an inverse trigonometric function. The sin inverse is called as an inverse trigonometric function. So the same concept is applicable for all other trigonometric functions. So you take tan, you take cot, you take cos, sec, cosec, anything. So the ratio will go on the other side and it will become an inverse function. The students, let's move ahead with what the derivatives of these inverse trigonometric functions is. Now, as I said, this lecture is dedicated only to write the formulas, to understand the formulas and to understand questions. I will not be discussing how these formulas came into this lecture. We will have a separate lecture just to understand what the derivative of an inverse function would look like and how to get those derivatives. So you make sure that you will watch the other video of getting derivatives of inverse function also. So today we are only going to write down all the six inverse trigonometric functions and their derivatives so students our first inverse trigonometric function is y is equal to sine inverse of x the first trigonometric the first inverse trigonometric ratio is y equal to sine inverse of x and the derivative of this function dy by dx is going to be you got to just memorize the formulas at this instance okay so as i said again i'm telling that we are going to only focus on the formulas in this lecture so dy by dx is going to be one upon root of 1 minus x square. So that's the formula of sine inverse of x, the derivative of sine inverse of x. It's 1 upon root of 1 minus x square. The second one is y is equal to cos inverse of x. Now the derivative is very similar to sine inverse of x. The derivative comes out to be minus 1 upon root of 1 minus x square. So they can be formed as a pair. So sine inverse of x and cos inverse of x, they have the derivatives very much similar to each other. The only difference you see is the sign, the positive and the negative sign. Let's move ahead. The next function I'm going to write is y is equal to tan inverse of x and its derivative is going to come 1 upon 1 plus x square. So that's the derivative of tan inverse of x. And let's move ahead and write the derivative of cot inverse of x. So the derivative is going to come minus 1 upon 1 plus x square. So students you can form pairs over here isn't it. So sine inverse and cos inverse can be taken together. Tan inverse and cot inverse can be taken together. The only difference in the formulas is the positive and the negative sign. Let's take the last pair also. We have the 
fifth formula y is equal to sec inverse of x and y is equal to it is going to be cosec inverse of x okay so the formula for this is dy by dx becomes equal to 1 upon x root of x square minus 1 and obviously for cosec inverse of x it is going to be minus 1 upon x root of x square minus 1 but one very important condition you want to remember is modulus of x has to be greater than 1 in both the cases modulus of x that means I am telling that the value of x should be kept positive it should be greater than 1 if it falls below 1 this will become an absurd value because observe if x is a value which is less than 1 its square will also be less than 1 and a value which is less than 1 minus 1 will become negative answer and it is inside the square root that becomes an imaginary value so that's why modulus of x has to be always greater than 1 so make sure that you note this point very properly that when you are going to write the derivative of sec inverse of x and cosec inverse of x modulus of x has to be greater than 1 also do you remember that when I have taken derivatives I have already told you that whenever a C comes whenever a C comes the formula of derivative will have a negative sign so that's that rule is still applicable here whenever a C has come the derivative always has a negative sign so students make sure that you first note down these formulas very properly somewhere in your notebook and make also this one point very clear that these formulas needs to be added to the formulas of derivatives we already have a long list of the formulas of derivatives so you make sure that you are going to add this formulas in the list of derivatives the formulas of derivatives also so students these are the formulas for inverse trigonometric functions again I am telling we are going to understand how these formulas came what is the theorem what's the background of inverse trigonometric functions in a different lecture this lecture we have only dedicated to understand the formulas and questions so students let's begin with some questions now so students let's begin with some questions based on the inverse trigonometric functions now look at the first question y equal to tan inverse of sec x plus tan x now know this one point very carefully that whenever you are solving a problem on inverse trigonometric functions try to make use of the basic trigonometric formulas for instance you should remember this that sine inverse of sin x if you do sine inverse of sin x the answer comes out to be x likewise if you do cos inverse of cos x the answer is x the reverse is also true that means if you take sin of sin inverse of x this time also the value comes out to be x so these are few things that you should always remember while solving questions on inverse trigonometric function so if you have tan inverse of sec plus tan now if you try to get the derivative using the composite function rule it will take too much time to get the answer for such kind of functions that means if you try and get the answer for this so we know that tan inverse of x we have just now seen that tan inverse of x the derivative is 1 upon 1 plus x square for tan inverse of x the derivative is 1 upon 1 plus x square but this is not x isn't it it is sec x plus tan x so i will again need to get the derivative of sec x plus tan x the same way i have to keep on differentiating all other questions that are written on the board so it is going to cost us too much time if i try to solve this question by using the concept of composite functions so whenever you get a problem on inverse trigonometric functions try to arrange the terms in such a way that if outer function is sine inverse try to get sine inside the bracket if outer function is <coughs> sorry tan inverse try to get tan inside the bracket and so on so let's take the first question now we have y is equal to tan inverse of sec x plus tan x now observe carefully sec x plus tan x i'm going to simplify this term first i'm going to make use of the trigonometric formulas that we have learned to simplify this particular term at the beginning sec x plus tan x now do you know that sec x can be written as 1 upon cos everyone knows that isn't it sec x is 1 upon cos x and tan x can be written as sin x upon cos x so 
I can see that the two terms have the same denominator which is cos x. So I can in the next step write 1 plus sin x upon cos x. Isn't it? I can write 1 plus sin x upon cos x. Now you got to again as I said remember all your trigonometric formulas very well. The formulas of trigonometry should be known like the back of your hand because without these formulas nothing can happen in calculus. So make sure that you write down the entire list of the formulas first and then take a look at all these questions. So students 1 plus sin x and cos x. There are something called as half angle formulas for these two functions available, for these two terms available. 1 plus sin x, if you take a look at this, 1 plus sin x. The half angle formula for 1 plus sin x is, remember it, if you do not know this formula, write down somewhere in your notebook so that you can always have it for reference, for further references. So 1 plus sin x, the half angle formula is cos x by 2 plus sin x by 2 the whole square so that's a formula of 1 plus sin x so 1 plus sin x is written as cos x by 2 plus sin x by 2 the whole square likewise the half angle formula for cos x the half angle formula for cos x is written as cos square x by 2 minus sin square x by 2 students look at the difference between the two formulas the numerator is the whole square isn't it the bracket and the whole square is there whereas the denominator is a square of the individual terms cos square x by 2 sin square x by 2 now if i read cos x by 2 as a and sin x by 2 as b so that's a plus b the whole square isn't it i'm reading cos x by 2 as a and sin x by 2 as b so that's a plus b the whole square the denominator is cos square x by 2 minus sin square x by 2 so that looks like a square minus b square so if i say a plus b the whole square in the numerator and denominator is a square minus b square you can very quickly understand that a square minus b square is actually a plus b and a minus b isn't it that means one of the a plus b can be cancelled from the numerator and the denominator so a plus b and a plus b cancels so what is left in the numerator one a plus b got cancelled one a plus b is left that means here cos x by 2 plus sin x by 2 is left isn't it cos x by 2 plus sin x by 2 is left in the numerator denominator it was a square minus b square so one of the a plus b got cancelled and a minus b is still left isn't it a minus b is still left so I write cos x by 2 minus sin x by 2. That's left, isn't it? Now, the next step is very important. Understand, remember carefully the next step because without remembering this statement, you cannot proceed further. So you got to note down this step also somewhere. So I'm going to do, I'm going to divide here the numerator and the denominator. Divide numerator and denominator by cos x by 2 very important statement students make sure that you have noted down this divide the numerator and denominator by cos x by 2 that means now look at this we have this entire numerator here this is our numerator and i'm going to divide this entire numerator by cos x by 2 so let's divide by cos x by 2 so the common denominator can be separated with the terms present in the numerator so cos and cos will separate here so the first term i'll be getting cos upon cos that's one and sine upon cos that's tan. So I write tan x by 2. Got that part. Further, upon the denominator. So I am dividing the denominator also by cos x by 2. Isn't it? The denominator also gets divided by cos x by 2. The cos x by 2 gets separated again. Isn't it? So cos upon cos becomes 1. Then in between I have a minus sign. And sign upon cos becomes again tan x by 2. So, so far I can see that sec x plus tan x has come 1 plus tan x by 2 upon 1 minus tan x by 2. Now, this much part I want you to note down first of all because I'm going to remove this part from here and then I'm going to write the question now. So, sec x plus tan x has come 1 plus tan x by 2 upon 1 minus tan x by 2. So, I'm going to remove first few lines from here. Let's remove the first few lines from here. I hope you have noted down these lines. I will write down the question now. So the question was y is equal to y is equal to tan inverse of sec x plus 
tan x. Now, you knew that sec x plus tan x on simplification gave you this answer. So, let's write that answer. So, tan inverse of sec x plus tan x has given me the answer 1 plus tan x by 2 upon 1 minus tan x by 2. Now, what you are going to do here is, this is very important. Knowing the formulas is a very important skill students you should develop. So make sure that you are going to know your formulas very thoroughly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put up a 1 here. That does not make any difference, isn't it? Adding a 1 over here does not make any difference. 1 into tan x by 2 is still tan x by 2. But writing this 1 has transformed this into a very important formula. Now, I'm going to write one more thing over there. Do you know that tan of pi by 4, pi by 4 is 45 degrees. So tan of pi by 4 is 1. Tan of pi by 4 comes out to be 1. So I can change 1 with tan pi by 4. If tan pi by 4 is 1, I can go the reverse way. 1 is tan pi by 4. So I can write my problem y is equal to tan inverse of this 1 can be written as tan pi by 4. Isn't it? Then plus, again, I have tan x by 2. So let's write tan x by 2 upon 1 minus. Don't change this one. This one has to be kept intact. So 1 minus this one I'm going to write again. Tan pi by 4 into tan x by 2. So ultimately, it comes out to be tan inverse of, look at this, tan A plus tan B upon 1 minus tan A tan B. I hope you remember this formula. Tan A plus tan B upon 1 minus tan A tan B. That's a formula of tan A plus B. So that gives me tan A plus B. So pi by 4 plus x by 2. So tan inverse of tan. So it will vanish from here because tan inverse and tan they both cancel each other and you are left with pi by 4 plus x by 2. So that's what y is. Now look at the y that was originally given to you. It was tan inverse of sec x plus tan x. Look at the y that you have got now. It is pi by 4 plus x by 2. Isn't it very simple now? Now if I say differentiate both sides with respect to x, I will get dy by dx is equal to derivative of pi by 4. It's a constant term. You all know that a constant derivative is 0. So the derivative of pi by 4 is going to become 0. Then plus, I see x by 2, x by 2, 1 by 2 is constant, so it goes out 1 by 2, x is left, <coughs> sorry, and the derivative of x is 1. So the ultimate answer came 1 by 2. So that's the derivative of the function y is equal to tan inverse of sec x plus tan x. You have to know your trigonometric formulas very well. So that was the answer for y is equal to tan inverse of sec x plus tan x. I want you to note down the solution very thoroughly because we will be moving ahead with the next question. Now students, Remember that this is one of the way of getting the answer. The answer came 1 upon 2. There can be one more way to get the same answer. There is another way to get the same answer. Now, for that what I am going to do here is, we need to know some other formulas also very properly. There are some formulas you have to know very thoroughly. Now, I am going to remove this part from here. I hope you have already noted down these things. There is one formula for inverse trigonometric functions and it goes like this tan inverse of a plus b upon 1 minus a b comes out to be tan inverse of a plus tan inverse of b. Remember this formula. Tan inverse of a plus b upon 1 minus a b comes out to be tan inverse of a plus tan inverse of b. This is true for a negative sign also. So tan inverse of a minus b upon 1 plus a b comes out to be tan inverse of a minus tan inverse of b. So you can make use of this formula also to solve the problem. So we have y is equal to tan inverse of this is a plus b this is a plus b upon 1 minus again a into b. So that would give me tan inverse of a plus tan inverse of b. So tan inverse of a is 1 plus tan inverse of b is tan of x by 
2. So tan inverse of 1 gives me pi by 4 and tan inverse of tan again. So tan and tan can cancel and you get x by 2. So this is one smart way of getting the same answer. So you can take any of the two methods to get the answer here. So again if you differentiate the derivative of pi by 4 is going to be 0 and the derivative of x by 2 is going to be 1 by 2. So that is one of the way to get the same answer. Students note down both the methods very properly in your books. We will move to the next question. So students let's move on to the next question. The next question that we have here is y is equal to sine inverse of a sin x plus b cos x whole upon root of a square plus b square. Now this is a very important question. There would be some more questions based on this particular type where the values of a and b can change. Now you have to observe the values very carefully. You have a, b and then the number is root of a square plus b square. So I can formulate some more questions. For instance, a and b can become 3 and 4. So that's 3 and 4 and then 3 square plus 4 square. So that's 9 plus 16 becomes 25 and root of 25 is 5. So this value can become 5. So the values can be 3, 4 and 5. So I can make all other arrangements where a and b can have different different values so the type will remain same so that's why we are going to understand this one question and based on this you can have multiple questions where values of a and b will change now let's see how to proceed for this problem as i said if you have sine inverse inside also you try to get sine so if you get sine inverse of sine the values will cancel the terms will cancel similarly even if you get sine inverse of cos, still cos can be transferred into sine and then sine inverse of sine will again cancel. So remember, if you have sine inverse outside, inside you try to get sine or cos, anything will do. The more important term, the more feasible term would be sine. Okay, so if you get sine, it is always better. So let's try and simplify this. I'm going to write sine inverse of a upon root of a square plus b square sin x plus b upon root of a square plus b square cos x. So now look at these terms. These terms are very important terms. The constant terms that are written over there. a upon root of a square plus b square and b upon root of a square plus b square. If you take these two terms, you do square of these terms and add them. Let's see what result I get. So I take a upon root of a square plus b square. I do the square of it. Then I take b upon root of a square plus b square and again I do square of it and add it. Will the answer be 1? Observe. So root square becomes a square plus b square. Root square becomes a square plus b square. The numerators are a square and b square. Add them. The answer is going to come 1. So if you observe that the square of the numbers is coming 1, then I can from here say that one of the number should be sine and the other number should be cos. Now it is irrelevant which is taken first. Either you can take cos also first or you can take sine also first. So remember that if there are two numbers in such a way that by doing the square of those numbers and then adding them, if the answer is coming 1, if I have two numbers such that if I take square of the numbers and I add them and the result is coming 1, then for sure you can say that the one number, that the first number will represent either sine or cos and the second number, if the first is taken as sine, the second number becomes cos and if the first number is taken as cos, the second number will become sine. Now I'll explain this using an example. Observe this. If you remember root 3 by 2 and say 1 by 2. Let's try to take these two numbers and square them and add them. So root 3 by 2 square and 1 by 2 square. Let's see what the answer comes. Root 3 by 2 square is 3 by 4. 1 by 2 square is 1 by 4. 3 by 4 plus 1 by 4. So 3 by 4 plus 1 by 4. The answer is coming 1. And root 3 by 2 can be written as sine of 60 degrees, isn't it? And 1 by 2 becomes cos of 60. So did you observe the first term has become sine, then the second term becomes cos. I can do the reverse also. Do you know that cos of 30 is root 3 by 2 and sine of 30 is 1 by 2. And we know that sine square theta plus cos square theta comes 1 and cos square theta plus sine square theta also comes 1. So that is why these numbers, I would term them as magic numbers. You take the two numbers, you do square of them, you add the numbers, the result is going to come 1. 
then the first number can be called as a sine and the second number becomes cos or I can say the first number becomes cos and the second number will become sine. So that is the example shown to understand this particular concept. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call the first number as sine and the second number as cos. Now this is also very important as I said outside I see sine inverse so inside I'm going to try and get sine. So let's see if I take the first number as say sine let's take the first number as sine so I'm going to call this as sine alpha so a upon root of a square plus b square is taken as sine alpha now you are going to learn this very important thing uh, 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 at this particular step so make sure that you pay, pay proper attention to understand this one concept here this one step here so I'm assuming that the first term is taken as sine let's see what happens let's see are we on the right track or not so if I take the first number as sine so sine alpha is a upon root of a square plus b square and cos alpha is taken as b upon root of a square plus b square so I've taken the numbers as sine and cos so if I take this value and go back in the equation I can write y is equal to sine inverse of so the first term is taken as sine alpha so it becomes sine x and sine alpha plus the next term becomes cos x and cos alpha now if you take a look at this particular expression you have to remember the formulas for cos a plus b cos a minus b sine a plus b and sine a minus b i guess you have pretty well recognized here that the formula of cos a minus b is it cos a cos b plus sine a sine b so that's nothing but the same term here isn't it that means the term that is present inside the bracket will get transformed into cos isn't it but as i said if outside you have sine inverse inside also you should try to get the term of sine that means my choice of the values is not wrong but it is not appropriate also isn't it i will get the term inside sine inverse as cos although it is not a problem but again i have to change cos into sine and then sine inverse of sine will vanish so instead of doing all these things if i'm able to convert the inner bracket directly to sine it will be more beneficial for me isn't it so that is why my choice of a upon root of a square plus b square as sine alpha and cos alpha will not give me the result that i want so that is why what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take the first term as cos and the second term as sine so this is what very important thing you have learned here make sure that you understand the choice of the terms depending on the problem now if it would have been a cos inverse problem then my first choice would have been absolutely correct if the problem was of cos inverse then my first choice was absolutely correct but since the problem is sine inverse i have to reformulate my choice so i'm going to take the first term as cos alpha and the second term as sine alpha so this is very important students you have to choose which term is cos and which term is sine so now i can go back to the question and write y is equal to sine inverse of so the first term a upon root of a square plus b square now becomes cos alpha so i write sine x into cos alpha then plus b upon root of a square plus b square is sine alpha so cos x and sine alpha and i hope that you have all recognized this is the formula of sine a cos b plus cos a sine b students formulas are very important make sure you know them all so sine a cos b plus cos a sine b the formula is sine a plus b so sine inverse of sine x plus alpha so what i can do here is sine inverse and sine can get cancelled and you get x plus alpha now remember that a root of a square plus b square is a constant term cos alpha is a constant term sine alpha is a constant term so if you divide these two equations sine alpha and cos alpha if you divide them you will get tan alpha isn't it sine alpha upon cos alpha that's tan alpha b upon root of a square plus b square upon a upon root of a square plus b square so these two terms when they get divided root and root will cancel you will get tan alpha b upon a so alpha comes out to be tan inverse of b upon a so alpha can be written as x plus 
tan inverse of b upon a but as i said a and b are constants tan inverse of b upon a is entirely a constant this is entirely a constant so y is simply x plus a constant now if you differentiate and get dy by dx the derivative of x is going to be 1 you know all the formulas make sure that you have watched my previous videos on formulas of derivatives so derivative of x is going to be 1 and derivative of alpha is going to be 0 so my answer comes out to be 1 so that is how the first question was solved sine inverse of a sin x plus b cos x upon root of a square plus b square now the second question is written over here and it is also on the same grounds we will take that question in a short while from now what you do is you first copy this solution very properly understand it and then we will move on to the next question Students, let's move on to the next question. We have y is equal to sine inverse of y is equal to sine inverse of root of 1 plus x plus root of 1 minus x upon 2. Now, again, I'm going to tell you whenever you have sine inverse outside, try to get sine inside. If you have cos inverse outside, you try to get cos inside. Now, this problem is a very typical type of question involving something called as standard substitutions. Take a notebook, take a pen and write down this heading called as standard substitutions. Lot many times you will need to make use of something called as standard substitutions. So I'm going to give you a list of the standard substitutions. You note them down in your book and then we will come back to this question. So the standard substitutions are standard substitutions. So R they are first one. The first one is if you have a root of a square minus x square. So if you ever see root of a square minus x square. Now a can be any number. It can be any constant number. It can be 9, 16, 1, 4, anything. It can be some other number which is not a perfect square also. Mark my words. The words are this can be a perfect square. Sometimes it might not be a perfect square. Even then the substitution is going to be standard. The substitution is x equal to a sine theta. Sometimes the substitution can also be x equal to a cos theta. But the standard one is x equal to a sine theta. Okay, so you can make use of a cos theta also. But more or less times we will be making use of x equal to a sine theta. Let's move ahead with the next substitution. The standard substitution root of a square plus x square so whenever you have root of a square plus x square your substitution is going to come x equal to a tan theta or sometimes we might also use a cot theta but the standard one is going to be x equal to a tan theta let's move ahead with the next standard substitution it is root of x square minus a square so when you have x square minus a square so look at this the first one was a square minus x square the second one is a square plus x square or you can also call this as x square plus a square it does not matter you write a plus b or you write b plus a next one is root of x square minus a square and then you will write x equal to a the substitution is sec theta or you can say a cosec theta so that's your standard substitution the first one usually the first ones are the standard substitutions although you can make use of the second one also depending on the type of question now the next one the fourth one is root of a plus x upon a minus x now you can reverse this order a plus x upon a minus x can be written as a minus x upon a plus x also sometimes the terms are interchanged so even the interchange still no worries either you get a plus x upon a minus x or you get a minus x upon a plus x both the times the substitution is going to be same and the substitution is x is equal to a cos theta. Now here, this is the only substitution available. If you observe the previous three substitutions, there were two alternatives, isn't it? But right now, x equal to a cos theta is the only substitution available for root of a plus x upon a minus x. Fine then, let's move ahead with the next substitution. The fifth one I'm going to write, root of x upon a minus x again students the terms can interchange a minus x can go up and x can come down so here the standard substitution is x equal to a sine square theta or sometimes you can also make use of 
a cos square theta but as as i said the first one usually is the standard one so these are some of the sub solutions that you will need while solving problems in derivatives now students these standard sub solutions will also be needed while solving questions on integration although integration has few more standard substitutions we will be covering those standard substitutions when we take lectures on integration at this moment for derivatives these many standard substitutions are more than enough so memorize them properly write them somewhere in a formula book and keep on revising them so at this moment if i look at the problem here it contains 1 plus x and 1 minus x doesn't it resemble a plus x and a minus x isn't it so 1 plus x and 1 minus x you get a plus x and a minus x now remember that it is not required that the terms have to be in the same order they can be anywhere in the problem isn't it still the substitution will Will remain same so students make sure that you have noted down the substitutions properly we will proceed ahead so i'm going to remove this because now i have observed that the standard substitution for my problem is going to be x equal to a cos theta and have you observed the value of a is 1 in this case so let's remove the standard substitutions so a plus x and a minus x the standard substitution is x equal to cos theta a cos theta so here the value of a is 1 so what i'll do here is i'm going to substitute x as cos theta now remember you are bringing some kind of substitution into the problem you are bringing the substitution so remember you have to replace the substitution back to its original value so this is very important you got to replace a substitution back to its original value so if x is cos theta i can say theta becomes equal to cos inverse of x very important students always and always you have to go back to your original substitution so theta is cos inverse of x so now i can say y becomes equal to sine inverse of root of 1 plus cos theta plus root of 1 minus cos theta upon 2. Now, I hope again you remember the basic formulas of trigonometry. Did you observe every single question that I'm solving here always needs some kind of formulas from the trigonometry. So it becomes mandatory, it becomes very important knowing the standard formulas, the trigonometric formulas very thoroughly, very properly. So I request you all to first prepare your basic formulas very properly, very thoroughly so that it becomes quite easy to explain the problems over here. So now 1 plus cos theta and 1 minus cos theta. If you know the formula, very good. If you don't know the formula, make sure that you note down this formula somewhere in your formula book. So 1 plus cos theta, the formula is 2 cos square theta by 2 and 1 minus cos theta it is 2 sin square theta by 2 these are called the half angle formulas 2 cos square theta by 2 and 2 sin square theta by 2 so i'm going to write here sin inverse of this is 2 cos square theta by 2 it is inside the square root so square root of 2 cos square theta by 2 so i can now say that cos square will come outside the square root and 2 will stay inside the root so i write here root 2 cos of theta by 2 plus root 2 sin of theta by 2 upon the common denominator is 2 so i can separate the common denominator 2 so are you noticing what the things what the changes are happening over here so root 2 and 2 can be cancelled and i will get sin inverse of 1 by root 2 cos theta by 2 plus 1 by root 2 sin theta by 2 now friends you have already observed that this question has gone back to our previous question isn't it a sin x plus b cos x upon root of a square plus b square observe carefully a is 1 b is 1 so 1 square plus 1 square 1 square is 1 plus 1 square is 1 became 2 and root of it is root 2 so that's what the number present over here so it's exactly what the problem is solved previously so now i can say 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2 i want to change it so i can write 1 by root observe do you know that sine pi by 4 pi by 4 is 45 degrees so sine pi by 4 is 1 by root 2 and cos pi by 4 is also 1 by root 2 now you need to decide whether the first term has to be sine or the first term has to be cos since outside sine inverse is there this term I would write as sine so that it becomes sine A cos B plus cos A sine B, isn't it? We remember that outside if it is sine inverse, 
I will try to get sine inside the bracket. If outside it is cos inverse, I will try to get cos inside the bracket. So I am going to write here sine inverse of this one by root 2 is going to become sine pi by 4. So I write sine pi by 4 and cos theta by 2 and then the other one by root 2 is going to become cos pi by 4 and sin theta by 2. Now students you have realized that this is nothing but sin a cos b plus cos a sin b. So that gives me sin inverse of sin pi by 4 plus theta by 2. So then sin inverse of sin. See sin inverse of sin has come. They will both cancel each other and the answer simply comes pi by 4 plus theta by 2. Now is pi by 4 a constant? Absolutely. Pi by 4 is a constant. Is theta by 2 a constant? So this is where your mind will come into picture. Do you remember that theta by 2? When I say theta term, what comes to your mind? Theta is not a constant. Even though it looks like a constant, isn't it? But theta, if you remember, go back to your substitution. Theta is what? Cos inverse of x. Theta is a term that is brought by us in the problem so we need to replace it back to its original term isn't it we have to replace it back to its original term so I will replace theta here so I can rewrite the problem as I'm going to remove first part from here I hope you have already copied make sure simultaneously you are copying the solution also so I'm going to write y is equal to pi by 4 plus let's write 1 by 2 here and then theta is nothing but what it is cos inverse of x so let's write cos inverse of x students i hope you have already noted down all the solution here so i'm going to remove few steps from here so now y is equal to pi by 4 plus half cos inverse of x did you see the knowledge of formulas has reduced a very complex problem into a very simple question isn't it the knowledge of the formulas isn't it it's very important you got to have a clear cut knowledge of all the basic formulas of trigonometry now let's come back to the question let's differentiate it so i get dy by dx i'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x pi by 4 is a constant term alone nobody is there with along with x isn't it so that's a constant term its derivative is going to become zero so zero plus half is a constant term although but it is accompanied with cos inverse of x half is even though constant it is accompanied with the term of x so I'll write half at the beginning and then derivative of cos inverse of x I hope you have already noted down the formulas of all the inverse trigonometric functions so the derivative of cos inverse of x is going to be minus 1 upon root of 1 minus x square and hence my answer comes out to be minus 1 by 2 root of 1 minus x square. So students, that's how the third question is solved. This is what the answer for the third question came. So make sure that you have noted down the solution until now. We will move on to the next question. So students, let's now move on to the next question. Our next question is y is equal to tan inverse of 5x plus 1 upon 3 minus x minus 6x squared. Now, remember that I have been telling so long now that if you have sine inverse, get sine inside. If you have tan inverse, get tan inside. Sec inverse, you get sec inside and so on. So as I see there is a tan inverse, my job is to get tan inside the bracket. But it is not always possible. Sometimes the questions are slightly tricky. There is no substitution available. With some kind of question so then what should be done what should you do when such kind of situation arises now students you should remember I have already discussed with you one formula in the same lecture which was tan inverse of a plus b upon 1 minus a b it is tan inverse of a plus tan inverse of b you should be remembering this formula isn't it now what i'm going to do is i can re write the same formula for a minus b upon 1 plus a b also the only thing changes is the negative sign students make sure that you are constantly noting down all the formulas also formulas are very 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 important okay 
let's come back to this question so i'm going to try and rearrange these terms as if i get this particular formula so look at my arrangement the formula tells me that you should get one here look at the formula there is a one present in the denominator the first term is one in the denominator do you have a one here so at the first instant i can see that there is no one present there is a three present can you students break the three to get one so three can be broken as one plus two to get the one so that is what i'm going to do here let's break the three i get tan inverse of 5x plus one upon i'm going to break this three as one plus two minus x minus 6x square now i've got the one isn't it i've got the one now my job is to get a into b i have to get the product of two terms all i can see is a quadratic expression here see that's a quadratic expression you can see there is x square there is x there is a constant but the problem is the quadratic expression is not written in its correct order the order should have been the first term should have been x square then the next term should have been x and lastly the constant comes so the order is not set over here so what i'll do is i'll first rearrange the terms into proper order for that what i'll do from these three terms let us take out a negative sign common so i'll be getting now tan inverse of 5x plus 1 upon let's bring the negative sign common from here so i can write minus let's bring the negative sign common i get 6x square it was with a minus sign now it becomes plus and it should be given the first preference so this term is going to be written at the beginning then comes the term of x it is also with a negative sign also becomes plus x last term is plus 2 it now i have taken out the negative sign common so it's going to become minus 2 isn't it so i get here tan inverse of 5x plus 1 upon 1 minus now my job is to get the factors of this students i hope you are already very good with the quadratic equations if you observe our quadratic equation here is 6x square plus x minus 2 so i'm going to get my factors 6x square plus x minus 2 you all know that the coefficient of x square goes and multiplies with the last term so 6 into minus 2 it becomes minus 12 so can i now write minus 12 as plus 4x and minus 3x plus 4 into minus 3 will give us minus 12 and 4x minus 3x also gives me x so the knowledge of factorization of quadratic expressions will also play a very important part then the last term which is minus 2 from the first two terms 2x is common isn't it 2x is common you are left with 3x plus 2 from the next two terms you take out the minus 1 common and you are left with 3x plus 2 again so your expression comes 3x plus 2 and 2x minus 1 so that's the simplified form that's a factorized form of the given quadratic equation let's write it then here so i write 3x plus 2 and i write 2x minus 1 and then i close my bracket here isn't it? let's close the bracket here now did you observe these terms are very important terms that you have got if you take these two terms and you add them try to add these two terms see what you get you get 3x plus 2x which is 5x 2 minus 1 which is plus 1 which is nothing but your numerator isn't it so these two terms that you have got here is nothing but the terms present in the numerator with an addition that means i can write here tan inverse of so the numerator becomes 3x plus 2 plus 2x minus 1 upon 1 minus 3x plus 2 and 2x minus 1 i hope you have understood so far now did you observe this uh, this expression has directly been resembling our formula it is exactly resembling our formula so i'm going to get here tan inverse of 3x plus 2 then there's a plus sign because the formula resembles tan inverse of a plus b upon 1 minus a b so tan inverse of 3x plus 2 and tan inverse of 2x minus 1 so this is what the simplification of y is equal to tan inverse of 5x plus 1 has happened now students i want you to first note down this entire solution because as as you can see there is less space available i have to remove some part from here that is what i will do now but make sure that you have simultaneously you are at the same time as i'm explaining this at the same 
same time you are also noting down the solution so students i'm going to remove this i have got the simplified form of this expression i'm going to write that simplified form so i'll remove this part remove this part so now i'm going to write the simplified form and the simplified form is tan inverse of 3x plus 2 and then plus tan inverse of 2x minus 1 so now i know the simplified form has come so let's remove all these steps make sure students you have already noted down all the steps very properly let's move ahead with the derivative now so now if i want to differentiate this let's see what do i get do you remember what is the derivative of tan inverse of x i hope you all remember because in the same lecture we have discussed the derivative of tan inverse of x and the derivative was 1 upon 1 plus x square and students you also know what is a derivative of a composite function students make sure that you have already watched my previous lectures on derivative concepts and the concepts of composite functions otherwise this lecture will be slightly challenging for you to understand so make sure that you have go, uh, gone and watched my previous lectures all the links for all the previous lectures are provided down into the description box also students there is a playlist of the entire topic of derivatives make sure you start watching the videos from the very first lecture and then keep on ascending further so now if i ask the derivative of tan inverse of u it is going to be 1 upon 1 plus u square but it is u so hence again derivative of u is going to come so let's remove this formula because now you know the formula you know the concept of composite function let's make use of those two concepts to get this answer so i'm going to get the answer as dy by dx is equal to so what's the derivative of tan inverse of x this is not x it is a function of x so it will be read as tan inverse of u so the derivative of tan inverse of u is 1 upon 1 plus u square so write 3x plus 2 square into again the derivative of 3x plus 2 i hope you have understood the concept that i've applied in this particular step then there is a plus sign because derivative of u plus v is derivative of u then a plus sign and derivative of v again i say tan inverse of you have 2x minus 1 it is not x it is a function of x so i'm going to call it as tan inverse of u so the derivative of tan inverse of u is going to be 1 upon 1 plus u square so 2x minus 1 the whole square and again the derivative of 2x minus 1 so now if i proceed further it is 1 plus if you want you can simplify so this is going to be 9x square isn't it a plus b the whole square so 9x square plus 2 into a into b so that's 2 into 3x into 2 that gives me 12x plus b square which is 4 into the derivative of 3x plus 2 that's 3 isn't it then plus 1 upon 1 plus a minus b the whole square again that's 4x square then there's a minus sign so that's the formula of a minus b the whole square so write a square minus 2ab that's 4x plus 1 and the derivative of 2x minus 1 that's going to be 2 i hope you are understanding how i'm taking these derivatives when i take the derivative i go inside i see first term i see second term there is a minus sign in between derivative of the first term which is 2x so 2x 2 is constant goes outside derivative x derivative is 1 further 1 is present constant term its derivative is going to become 0 so that's how the answer 2 and the answer 3 came so finally i can write my answer as 3 upon 4 and 1 can be added so you write 9x square plus 12x plus 5 that is simplification of the first term plus the second term 2 upon 1 plus 1 is going to become 2 so you write 4x square minus 4x and plus 2 now students one more thing you can do now i'm not going to write that step you can definitely simplify the last step for yourself in this term if you observe all the three terms 2 is common isn't it you can take out the 2 common and that 2 can be cancelled in the numerator you can easily cancel that 2 in the numerator so i'm going to leave that step for you all you complete the last step on your own so students this is how i've got the derivative of tan inverse so not always a standard substitution might help us 
not always the standard substitution will be useful sometimes some other technique some other formula can be used to solve a problem so that is what i have done in this tan inverse of 5x plus 1 upon 3 minus x minus 6x square i i think that you have already copied down the noted down the entire solution with you make sure that you are copying the solution simultaneously as i am teaching all these things so students that was the formula that was a solution for the problem why the tan inverse of so and so now we will be proceeding with the next question let's see what the next question has so students let's come to the next question we have sin inverse of 2 raised to x plus 1 upon 1 plus 4 raised to x now this is a very powerful question this is going to tell you how knowing the formulas are going to be of great help to us now look at the question since there is a sine inverse outside and we are all doing inverse trigonometric functions if you have sine inverse try to get sine inside or a cos can also do then you can later on change the cos to a sine so at this moment i can see sine inverse is there something should be done so that the inner terms should transform into a sine now that is not always possible we might not always get the standard substitution sometimes we have to think out of the box now look at the problem look at the arrangement that I am to do in this question if I write the problem like this 2 raised to x plus 1 I hope everyone knows that a raised to m plus n is a raised to m into a raised to n is that everybody knows that a raised to m plus n is a raised to m into a raised to n so I am going to write 2 raised to x plus 1 as 2 raised to x into 2 raised to 1 so 2 raised to x into 2 raised to 1 can simply be written as 2 into 2 raised to x isn't it 2 into 2 raised to x upon look at this 1 plus 4 raised to x now this is another important formula you should be knowing 4 raised to x can be written as 2 square isn't it raised to x 4 is nothing but 2 square raised to x do you know that a raised to m whole raised to n is a raised to m into n so m and n the powers can multiply and the powers can interchange also i can write a raised to n to the power m isn't it so i'm going to change it to 1 plus so 2 raised to 2 raised to x can be written as 2 raised to x the whole square so that's what the change is you need to understand carefully so there was 4 raised to x look at the rearrangement that i've done with the terms it is 2 raised to x square now students you have to know your formulas like the back of your hand every time i'm telling there is a formula like this see whether you recall this formula or not sine 2t is equal to 2 tan theta or I can write sine 2 theta here let us say sine 2 theta is 2 tan theta upon 1 plus tan square theta so theta is a more common variable that we usually use so I am writing the formula sine 2 theta is 2 tan theta upon 1 plus tan square theta look at the expression it is 2 and then 2 raised to x then 1 plus square of the same term did you observe 2 there is tan theta and then there is square of the tan theta isn't it so students this is very important what i'm going to do here is i'm going to do my substitution of 2 raised to x so 2 raised to x i'm going to substitute 2 raised to x as tan theta now remember theta is a variable that we are introducing into the solution so later on we have to replace it back to its original value so from here you can say theta is going to be tan inverse of 2 raised to x isn't it so tan goes on the other hand side and becomes tan inverse of 2 raised to x so remember when the problem gets simplified you have to replace theta back to its original variable now let's move ahead we have y is equal to y is equal to sine inverse of 2 there is 2 raised to x and we are taking 2 raised to x as tan theta upon 1 plus 2 raised to x square it is tan theta 2 raised to x is tan theta raised to 2 becomes tan square theta so you can see that this is your formula of sine 2 theta so let's write sine inverse of sine 2 theta now you know that sine inverse and sine can get cancelled and you simply get 2 theta but as i said theta is not a constant you have to take care of that theta is not a constant it has to be replaced back to its original value which is tan inverse of 2 raised to x 
सो फ्रेंड्स वाई कम्स आउट टू बी टू थीटा इज टैन इनवर्स ऑफ टू रेस टू एक्स दैट्स योर सिंप्लीफिकेशन इज अट यू हैव नॉट गॉट द आंसर ये वी आर सॉल्विंग ऑल दिस क्वेश्चन फॉर डेरिवेटिव वी हैव टू डिफ्रेंशिएट द गिवन फंक्शन वाई दैट्स मीन दैट मीन्स माई क्वेश्चन इज डी वाई बाय dx to be found isn't it so i've got y here so what i'm again going to do i have i i'm i'm thinking that you have already noted down all the solution all the steps here so again i'll remove the few steps from here so that i have some space to write the next step of my question next step of my solution so the simplification came y is equal to two times of two times of tan inverse of 2 raised to x isn't it so that's my simplification so let's get my final answer i'm going to differentiate both sides so i get dy by dx is equal to 2 is a constant there is a term of x isn't it this is nothing but x function so 2 is a constant let's differentiate tan inverse do you know that the derivative of tan inverse of x derivative of tan inverse of x is 1 upon 1 plus x square so here 1 upon 1 plus x square but is it x it is not x it is 2 raised to x then square of it so 2 raised to x square into again the derivative of 2 raised to x you got to know your composite functions concepts very thoroughly now i write 2 upon 1 plus 2 raised to x square becomes 2 raised to 2x or you might be remembering i have explained you that 2 raised to x square can be written as 4 raised to x isn't it if you do not remember this go back a little bit and then watch it how this 2 raised to x came so it is transformed into 4 raised to x derivative of a raised to x if you remember formulas are very important every now and then every single step will need extensive use of formulas so derivative of 2 raised to x is 2 raised to x log 2 it is same as a raised to x derivative it is a raised to x log a so my answer comes 2 log 2 2 raised to x upon 1 plus 4 raised to x so that was all the solution for our problem y is equal to sin inverse of 2 raised to x plus 1 upon 1 plus 4 raised to x i hope you have not noted down and you have understood the entire solution very properly and very thoroughly we will move on to the next question now so students let's move on with our last question of this particular session so far i hope you have understood what the questions have taken for inverse trigonometric function so we'll now move on to the last problem for today's discussion so now we have y is equal to tan inverse of root x 3 minus x upon 1 minus 3x again and again i'm telling knowledge of formulas is very important i guess you all remember the formula of tan 3 theta if you are not knowing the formula make sure that you note down this formula at this moment in your notebooks somewhere and revise it so tan 3 theta students the formula comes 3 tan theta minus of tan cube theta upon 1 minus 3 tan square theta as i am telling every single time knowledge of formulas is a wisdom you have to know your formulas very thoroughly so that's 3 tan theta minus tan cube theta upon 1 minus 3 tan square theta the formula of tan 3 theta now if you take a look at the problem so this is more or less resembling the formula at this moment it is not an exact resemblance but more or less so what i can do is i can rearrange the terms i can write y is equal to tan inverse of let's multiply root x inside the bracket you get 3 root x minus of do you know x is root x square is it you might be knowing that x is actually root x the whole square and the root x present outside the bracket is getting multiplied inside the bracket so root x multiplies inside you get root x square multiplied with root x became root x the whole cube so are you noticing where the steps are going where they are advancing look at the formula the formula is resembling 3 tan theta 3 root x tan cube theta tan cube theta root x cube upon let's proceed further also let's see what's happening with the next step next terms also 3x it is pre present over there so 3x is as as we have written here previously it is 
root x square so now if you observe this particular expression is exactly resembling the formula is a 3 tan theta minus tan cube theta upon 1 minus 3 tan square theta look at the terms every single term is going and matching every single term in the formula so i have clearly understood what is my substitution i am going to substitute root x i'm going to substitute root x as tan theta so from here what does theta come it comes tan inverse of root x isn't it so we have to replace our substitution back into the problem once the things are sorted out so i get now y is equal to tan inverse of 3 root x is tan theta so i write 3 tan theta minus root x cube so root x is tan theta it's cube so i write tan theta cube or you can write tan cube theta upon 1 minus 3 tan theta square or tan square theta whatever you want to write you can write so this is the formula of tan 3 theta so i get tan inverse of tan 3 theta tan inverse and tan has come so they will cancel each other and you will be left with only 3 theta and replace back the value of theta theta has to again come back to its original value which is tan inverse of root x so theta is tan inverse of root x so did you observe a very complex problem by taking help of the formula and the substitution has transformed into a very simple term isn't it a complex problem got transformed into a very simple term it is only through what only through the knowledge of formulas and the right application of the formula so i've got my simplification so as usual i'll remove few of the terms from here hoping that you have already noted them down so let's remove few of the steps and write down now the simplified form which is three times of tan inverse of root x and let's now get the derivative of this term so i get dy by dx 3 is a constant now you all know the derivative of tan inverse of x it is going to be 1 upon 1 plus x square so i write 1 upon 1 plus x square is it x here no it is not x it is a function of x so you write function of x and square and do not forget to again get the derivative of the function of x so derivative of root x so on further simplification and getting all the formulas i'm going to get the derivative as 3 upon root of x square is going to become x and derivative of root x is going to become 1 upon 2 root x so my final answer is 3 upon 2 root x into 1 plus x so students i hope you have understood this particular question also that was my last question for this concept that we have learned in our lecture this lecture was entirely devoted only to understand the formulas of inverse trigonometric function and we have seen some numericals based on that particular concept now students the numericals that i have taken they might not be enough but they are enough to understand the concept the questions that i have taken they are to be practiced very properly and make sure that you take your state board textbooks or any other study material that you have try and solve as many questions as you can based on these particular types now every question will be so will be like a new question to you all it will look like a different problem altogether but believe me if you know your formulas very thoroughly then definitely you will be able to solve any given question on this particular concept so students i'm going to leave you here with this particular concept make sure that you like this video subscribe to the channel and share the videos as much as much as possible thank you so much for watching have a great day ahead